How's it going YouTube? My name is Ari and welcome to Blue Lion Finance, a channel dedicated to investing in my very own personal journey to amassing $100,000 with my Vanguard brokerage account. Now as we speak, Wall Street is becoming increasingly concerned about a recession and with the latest CPI report reporting yet another increase in inflation, the market has been rocked by fear with all major indexes down and my personal account also plummeting from my last video by $4,492.96, bringing my account total today to $84,000. $325.64 on the day. And as for today's video, giving the growing concerns of a recession to come, we're gonna be diving into three recession-proof stocks that you may wanna consider buying given you can invest into them now and with ease, knowing that these three industry titans will ultimately prevail, just kick back for the long term. Before we get going, make sure you tap on that thumbs up button as it certainly helps me out in growing this channel and getting the word out there. If you haven't already subscribed, make your way over to doing so. I'd love for each and every one of you to be on this journey with me. Now YouTube, let's go ahead and dive right in. Now, just before we get going, I think it's most important for all of us to really understand and define what exactly everyone is talking about when they're dropping the R word, which is recession. recession. Because personally, I think it creates a lot of unnecessary fear for investors when they don't really understand the word in the context in which it's being used. So with that being said, a recession is defined by experts when a nation's economy experiences negative gross domestic product, GDP, for two quarters along with other factors like rising levels of unemployment, falling retail sales, and contracting measures of income and manufacturing. And although that does in fact sound quite daunting, recessions are in fact inevitable. They're a part of business cycles and a regular cadence of expansion and contraction that occurs in the economy. After all, what goes up at some point must come down. And after all this talk of a recession, the latest inflationary report did come out this past Friday reporting that inflation has surged to an even higher high just when we think it couldn't, now sitting at 8.6%, which is just another reason for the market mayhem we are currently experiencing. Now, a rule of thumb during these times of panic, well, do not panic. It is all about the long term. So let's first talk about the beverage behemoth, Coca-Cola, ticker symbol KO. Well, I know it sure as heck may be a boring company to invest in during these days, given a startup type of culture and tech-driven markets. We now look at Coca-Cola and it checks off all the boxes for a recession-proof, long-term returning investment. and has only proven itself time and time again through various market swings since its founding back in 1886, not to mention it has only grown into a more of a powerhouse with over 200 brands worldwide and operations in all but three countries, <laughs> Cuba, North Korea, and Russia, allowing for it all to reach a market capitalization where it is now sitting at $266 billion. That ultimately should give us a tremendous boost of confidence when investing into Coca-Cola. Before I dive into the numbers, I always think it's important and worthwhile to highlight a Buffett stock when we have one on our hands. So let's do so and noting that Coca-Cola makes up about 6.7% worth of Berkshire Hathaway's portfolio, totaling $25 billion worth of its investment from the man I would deem the Coca-Cola king himself. Yet Buffett aside, a company like Coca-Cola with all its success is a no-brainer as they continue to rake in highly predictable cash flow in developed countries while boosting organic sales and growing emerging markets with what seems to be a conquest to ensure their brand is everywhere and anywhere it could possibly be. But regardless Regardless of how strong the brand name may be, when the market grows fearful, Coca-Cola is no exception to the rules of volatility, which is why we are seeing the stock slide from its 52-week high of $67 per share to $61 per share, which is not necessarily a whole lot, but it is in fact nearly 9% worth of a change, with its P-E ratio currently sitting at 25.9, which of course I'd like to see come down just a little bit more. It is in fact running with Buffett principles that I would argue now is a great time to go ahead and buy a quality company for a fair price price and straying away from those fair companies selling at quality prices. And of course, we can expect growth to come as we work through the economic turnaround, with analysts expecting that Coca-Cola is going to rise to a median stock share price of $70 per share and a high stock share price of $76 per share, all while we're going to be able to collect on Coca-Cola's dividend, with its dividend king status and a dividend yield currently sitting at 2.8%. As for our second recession-proof stock that has very similarly to Coca-Cola dominated its respective industry, I want to talk 
talk about Johnson & Johnson, ticker symbol J&J, which has become the world's leading healthcare company by a long shot since its founding in 1886 and initially operating three divisions from pharmaceuticals and medical devices to consumer goods with roughly 250 subsidiaries, which enabled its market capitalization to balloon to over $454 billion. Now, what makes Johnson & Johnson such an ideal stock for adverse economic conditions? I'm happy you asked. Healthcare revenues are typically disconnected from economic volatility, meaning it is a safe haven for investors while the rest of the market is certainly trembling. However, more specifically to Johnson & Johnson, it gives investors a broad range of exposure to the entire healthcare industry and, of course, sufficient diversification with a massive balance sheet that operationally only continues to perform well, bringing in $93 billion in revenue just during 2021 alone, and once again claiming top 10 most valuable companies in the world last year. Now, what is most important to know about Johnson & Johnson is that it recently unveiled some major changes in their business plan, like rolling out their consumer consumer goods segment into its own company and recently undergoing leadership changes with their new CEO declaring that Johnson & Johnson's next decade will be one like we haven't seen before in terms of its current stock share price. Yes, it was certainly rattled by the market volatility, but not all that much falling from $186 at its 52 week high to $172 where it sits now, about a 7.5% change with its PE ratio at 23.24. I would say that Johnson & Johnson is another quality company that we should be investing into right now. And personally, Personally, I'm looking to grow my share count up to 100 total shares worth of Johnson & Johnson, currently at that 50% mark. But looking ahead, I am eager for the big comeback as analysts only foresee Johnson & Johnson's median stock share price coming up to $187 per share and a huge jump to a high stock share price sitting at $215 per share. And of course, until it reaches those stock share prices, we can enjoy Johnson & Johnson's dividend at 2.55% without worry as they too earn the status of a dividend king. Now, finally, our third recession-proof stock is Procter & Gamble, ticker symbol PG, which is a multinational consumer goods corporation that was founded back in 1837, which has been firing on all cylinders ever since, selling a range of products, whether it's baby care to laundry or grooming or personal care products. I can guarantee you that you are already buying Procter & Gamble products regularly and using their products. So in my opinion, you might as well go ahead and invest in what you already use. But that is also to say that their products are a necessity in our homes, therefore making Procter & Gamble an incredibly resilient investment. To speak about that resiliency, even with rising inflation, Procter & Gamble was able to increase their sales by 4% entering 2022 and has only organically grown sales by another 10% again as of their last earnings report, which they shared was done by increased prices as well as volume. Again, only proving their resiliency as Procter & Gamble customers continue to pick their products over competitors on the shelf. Now, all in all, Procter & Gamble is now at a market capitalization at over $340 billion with no intentions of slowing down anytime soon. Now, they are experiencing year-over-year -year growth. Of course, no company, however, is immune to market volatility. Procter & Gamble is no exception to that rule. It fell from its 52-week high, $165 per share, down to $141 per share, creating a 14% change, which really smells like a great opportunity to me, especially as that PE ratio of theirs is at 24.81 and analysts are only projecting, of course, a rebound with median stock share price at $170 per share and a high stock share price at $185 per share. Now we can exercise patience for this comeback as well with their dividend yield sitting at 2.52% with what do you know, another earned title of a dividend king. Now finally, if Coca-Cola, Johnson & Johnson and Procter & Gamble just didn't quite do it for you, I wanna throw this one last investment out there for you. It is a consideration in investing into a piece of the entire pie by investing into a broad market ETF or index fund. My personal go-to is Vanguard's Total Stock Market Index Fund, ticker symbol of VTI, which allows an investor to invest into over 4,000 stocks with a mixture of both growth and value investments, whether they are small, mid, or large caps. This fund has it all from stocks like Apple and Microsoft to Amazon and Tesla, Google, Berkshire Hathaway, United Health, and Johnson & Johnson. You just cannot go wrong with it. It is truly a fail-safe investment and essentially mirroring the market as we all know over the long term. History just continues to illustrate growth on growth on growth. So with all of that being said, if you liked what you heard, you learned something new, or you have even better recession-proof stocks to share, drop all those comments below. I'd certainly love to read through them and of course, allow everyone to get your take on it all. Now, I am by no means a financial advisor, so make sure you do your own due diligence following my videos, but 
do tap on that thumbs up button as it greatly helps me out in growing this channel. And of course, do us both a favor here in subscribing to the channel. I'd love for each and every one of you to be on this journey with me at YouTube. Until our next video, I will see you all there.